Welcome to this customer request tech tip provided by Imagine It Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be working through the tech tip with you today. In this tech tip we're going to address a question that was given to us uh, by one of our customers. We have a customer who's using a quilted surface to define the uh, clearance zone around a particular piece of equipment and they need to run an interference analysis between that quilted surface and the rest of the solid bodies in an assembly and they're running into a problem and let me demonstrate that. I have a simple assembly here that represents what the customer is going through. I've got my quilted surface and my solid body and I'm going to run an interference analysis and for set number one I'll pick the solid and for set number two I'll pick the surface and I can confirm that the surface is selected by looking in the browser. I'll click OK and as some of you might have expected we're not going to see any interferences because the surface is not uh, dealt with inside of Inventor as a typical solid body. So we don't see anything in the interference analysis. So what are we going to do? Well there's a couple of things you can do to manually check for the interference between solids and surfaces. Uh, so for this example we are going to create a separate part. We're going to copy both of these bodies into the part and then do some manual checking to see, for instance, what's the volume of interference or what's the perimeter or the edges that these two parts share. I'll start the part by, uh, I'll start the process by creating a component. I'm not going to name it. I'm not going to save this uh, unless I absolutely have to later. We'll just click OK and click in the background. So in the browser, I've started a new part. I've got my new sketch. I'm not going to use that new sketch, so I'll simply uh, return out and delete the sketch. Now right now we have a completely empty part, and the first thing we need to do is copy both of these bodies into this particular part. And to do that, I'm going to use the copy object command. The first object I'll copy is the solid, and I'm going to bring it over as a solid body, a non-associative solid body. I'll click OK. It comes in as a base part. And then I'll repeat the command and bring in the surface. And in this case, I'm going to bring it over as a composite feature. I've tried this using surface and composite. Both of these will work the same way. You do not have to make these associative unless you have a downstream process you're trying to preserve. So now that I have the two bodies in place, I'm quickly going to go over and take the visibility off of the original parts. And right now I have basically my part file with both of these bodies brought into the environment. Well the first thing I want to show you is how do you generate the edges that the two parts share. Well to do that I'm going to create a 3D sketch. In the 3D sketch environment we have the intersection curve command. This is a nice command that does exactly what it says. I can pick one part and then another part or another surface body. Click OK and then we can generate the intersection between the objects. Now if there was no intersection or interference, this command would not work. So I'll finish my 3D sketch and I'm just going to take the visibility off of that. And now let's take a look at generating the actual interference between the two uh, bodies, the solid body and the surface. To do that, in this particular case, I'm going to use the sculpt command. Uh, the sculpt command allows me to take a watertight surface and turn it into a solid body. Now I'm going to do this and I'm going to choose to use the cut option. And here you can see that you know, by default the outside is cut away. Uh, you can reverse that with this little indicator right here if you wanted to cut away the inside of the part. But I, I do I want to cut away the outside of the component. I'll click OK. And what I'm left with is that area of interference between the two components. Now if I were to go to my eye properties, I could uh, bring that up, go to the physical tab and update it and actually tell you what the volume of interference between the surface and the solid would be. Now I'm just going to undo that step. Actually uh, I could click return at this point. Uh, now that I have my information, now that I've documented that there is an interference between the surface and the solid. I can come in and delete this part. I don't need to keep it. Uh, I can actually get rid of it. 
and I'll turn on the two original parts again. So this is going to conclude our customer request tech tip on analyzing the interference between a surface and a solid. If you'd like to check out additional tech tips, you can find them at imagineit.com.